Did you know that discovering which chakras are out of balance can help you provide a window into wellness and weight balance? Today, in episode 20 of Thin Thinking, I am interviewing transformational wellness coach Kat Dillon. We are going to get inside the fascinating world of chakras, how to tell when your chakras are off, what are the benefits of chakra balancing for weight, and so much more. So stay tuned. Did you know that our struggle with weight doesn't start with the food on your plate or get fixed in the gym? 80% of our weight struggle is mental. That's right. The key to unlocking long-term weight release and management begins in your mind. Hi there, I'm Rita Black. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, weight loss expert, best-selling author, and the creator of the Shift Weight Mastery Process. And not only have I helped thousands of people over the past 20 years achieve long-term weight mastery, I am also a former weight struggler, carb addict, and binge eater. And after two decades of failed diets and fad weight loss programs, I lost 40 pounds with the help of hypnosis. Not only did I release all that weight, I have kept it off for 25 years. Enter the Thin Thinking Podcast where you too will learn how to remove the mental roadblocks that keep you struggling. I'll give you the thin thinking tools, skills, and insights to help you develop the mindset you need, not only to achieve your ideal weight, but to stay there long-term and live your best life. Hello, and welcome to episode 20 of Thin Thinking. Wow, I feel like number 20 is a milestone. Uh, I started this podcast in the spring of 2021, not long ago, and it has been so fun to go deep on the subjects that I think are helpful for people to hear about managing your mindset around weight mastery. So I just wanted to stop and pause and give a big thin thinking hug to all of you who have been supporting the podcast with downloads. We've had over 4,000 downloads so far and thousands of listeners from all over the world. I mean, my mind is blown. China, India, Slovenia, Oman, Australia, Chile, and Canada, along with all of the 50 of the United States. And that is just, wow, cool. So keep passing along the thin thinking to those you love and my gratitude and love to all of you who, like I said, have become a part of what I consider the new uh, growing thin thinking community. I have a slogan or a saying uh, with the Shift Weight Mastery community. I say, alone we diet, together we shift, and uh, alone we uh, diet, and together we all are a powerful community of thin thinkers. So thank you for being here with me. And if you haven't tried my free hypnosis session, Curb Your Sugar Cravings, please grab it. The link is always in the show notes below, as is the opportunity to subscribe or to, you know, get on my newsletter list. So um, it's all there in the show notes. So today, my podcast, um, we are talking with Kat Dillon, and I am so excited about this interview. I know you're going to love it. Uh, Kat Dillon is a registered holistic nutritionist a professional chef, a certified transformational wellness coach, and she is so much more. She assists wellness seekers through the commingling of food as medicine, holistic life principles, and transformational coaching. Through tangible teachings, Kat transforms her clients' unsuccessful attempts at improving and maintaining their health using her empowering nutrition and self-care programs. She focuses on empowering everyone with the ability to source their own energy, focus, and well-being for life. Kat helps motivate and educate clients at any level of change. She encourages everyone to learn to listen to their body's innate wisdom so that they can facilitate their own healing and achieve their desired results. Her areas of expertise include anxiety and depression, insomnia, sugar and carb cravings, allergies, immune system, 
digestive difficulties, metabolic disorders, weight loss resistance, and many others. She's been a keynote speaker and director of nutrition at the award-winning wellness retreat Veravia, as well as a regular contributor to Access Elite, Modern Bride Magazine, Demand Media, and Chow Hound. Kat practices in Encinitas, California, and lives with her husband and two rescue dogs, Moki and Minnie. When she's not consulting or teaching, you'll find her on her Peloton, lifting heavy objects or hiking with her dogs. Well, I am so excited that you're here with me, Kat. I, uh, I really am excited to have you talk to our listeners because what you do is so fascinating and so out, you're like out of the scope of what I think a lot of people are used to and I think people are really excited to learn. Um, I know that you're both like a holistic nutritionist and a transformational wellness coach uh, and so much more. So can you just hello and tell us, you know, a little bit about how you got into what you do? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I feel an, like just an honor and I feel so blessed to to know you and to be on your show, Rita. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Feelings mutual. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I got into nutrition via food, via, you know, loving culinary, loving cooking, grew up with a family of, of big cooks and you know, I originally went to culinary school and um, I just wasn't excited about what I was doing, right? I um, mm. I was just not in alignment with my life. I really wanted okay. to um, celebrate food, but I also wanted to explore um, teaching other people how to eat right, how to eat, um, you know, according to their rhythms, how to you know, eat uh, delicious food yet completely unprocessed and um, to celebrate food, but um, also really not to have it rule them because I, you know, I come from a disordered eating background also. Um, and that's why I, I, I love that I, I do attract those, those clients as well. Um, so, so yeah, I'd love to hear a little more about that. So you, you struggled with disordered eating. Is that how you got into eating healthy? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and I really realized through, you know, going to study nutrition later, um, that it was more than the food that it was, if we're not, um, if we're not addressing the mindset, the beliefs and all the, the belief patterns, mm -hmm. um, we're not going to get anywhere with food, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and then when, when we learn at the university level, like years and years ago when I um, was first studying nutrition in the university level, I learned, you know, it was just the calories in, calories out mm -hmm. motto, right? Um, it was very driven by industrial um, or industries and, and and really about like, you know, who's funding what, and um, it just, you know, it wasn't my cup of tea. So later I uh, got into holistic nutrition. Okay. And that is where I really, really found my niche, right? When we were starting to deal with not only um, eating, but what is your lifestyle like? What is your, what are your beliefs? Right. What, um, you know, what are your, what are your lifestyle habits? All, everything, mind, body, and spirit. How fascinating. And and when, so that is what you would say, holi holistic nutrition embodies all of those things. Yeah, complete embodiment. Right. You take in the whole person within that. That is so cool. And how did that pivot into being a transformational wellness coach? Yeah, so that's a great question because um, when I first started uh, my nutrition uh, business after I got out of school, um, I was also a personal trainer. And um, 
loved doing those things. I was kind of spreading myself so thin, you know, I'd either have, I never had people that wanted to do both, you know, oh. people that just wanted to eat poorly and just exercise it off. <laughs> right? Or it was the people that, uh, you know, just wanted to eat really well and they just, eh, they weren't so interested in the movement part. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to just go for it. I'm going to quit personal training because really what I want to teach is nutrition. Mm-hmm. And um, and when I got out there and I was realizing, Rita, that people were not struggling because, you know, uh, they were eating the wrong foods only. It was really their mindset. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So your transformational wellness really is dealing with the mind first? Well, I can't really say say that. I would say, you know, I mean, look, our body's physiology is going to run our mind, right? We know that mm-hmm. gut-brain connection. Yep. Um, if our physiology is off and our blood sugar is crazy off the scale, we're not sleeping, and that's going to affect our decision-making. Absolutely. Right? We're going to be ruled by that sympathetic portion of the nervous system we're not going to be our mood's not going to be happy our relationships aren't going to work we're going to eat the wrong foods we're going to eat for the wrong reasons we just want to not feel the feelings right and that's what really interests me in my field is is really like how our thoughts control Mm -hmm. uh, our actions and then also ultimately how our actions over and over um, feed back into that belief about ourselves and therefore what we keep doing. Mm-hmm. And with regards to that, because I know we're, we, we're going to talk about chakras. How is the, the chakra uh, and, and chakras? I'm going to say, I keep saying chakras. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm not uh, a cool. Un- <laughs> so, so, Within that, within what is, so when you're caring for somebody, when you're, you're, somebody comes to you and it says, Kat, you know, help me get back on track. Like I, you know, like I'm all over the place. I'm eating all over the place. I want to lose some weight. I want to feel better. Uh, where would you start with the chakras first or how would you, you, you know, start with that person? Yeah, I find that really, really funny, uh, Rita, because I once as well, because I didn't know what the chakras were. They sound so mystical and so out there and so woo-woo. And I'm like, chakras, well, hmm, I don't get it. So, you know, I'm just... I'm just going to do my thing and and then learn about them later. But I found that um, they can really be used interchangeably with uh, something that I learned from one of my greatest teachers, Deanna Minnick. Um, She coined the seven systems of health. Mm. And truly, that's what they are. Wow. The chakras are, all they are, uh, are a series of endocrine organs tissues and glands that run from the base of our spine to the crown of our head. And basically what they do is they're basically they're energetic systems, right? They right. take energy from the outside and, and bring it in. And, and it also takes energy from the inside of the body out. Oh, okay. Right. So any, any kind of um, energy where we might be off in an organ or an area of our body will show up in certain health complaints. So let me give you an example. Um, So a lot of people, you know, during this pandemic that we've been going through and um, some, some of them still are going through this, they've been feeling quite off in their um, first chakra. And what that is, is their, is their root chakra. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, um, they feel as if they're just surrounded with so much so much to do so much you know so many people they feel like they're just overwhelmed and they just really feel ungrounded even though they have a home right they have a roof over their head uh they still feel destabilized because they don't know what's happening right We're, right. we're, we're unsure of what the future holds for us right that really destabilizes our uh, our stress, our adrenal glands, right? Our, our adrenal uh, hormones, uh, epinephrine and cortisol, right? Yeah. 
And so what happens is that vibration uh, permeates and we end up with certain energetic imbalances in that area. So it could be um, feeling quite insecure. Mm. And, and we want to, let's bring some food in with this. And, you know, sometimes people feel like, you know, you, you can't leave the house without a snack in your bag. Right. Right. Or maybe it's um, feeling the need to, to, to eat or eat more than you need to eat just mm-hmm. to stabilize your emotions, just to kind of feel more grounded because people we'll eat not only to eat and to have delicious food, but also because it, it gives them the emotional response and maybe feeling more connected or grounded. Right. And I yeah. see a lot of that in people that want to always have this habit of eating more than they need at a meal. And right. that feeling of like being slightly bloated and, and filled up mm-hmm. because it grounds them. Mm. That's very true i i see that and uh, that we like to i often have clients who say you know i just like to feel full and i certainly know from my own struggles with weight that like you get sort of addicted to that feeling full even though you know consciously ah this isn't good for me i shouldn't feel so full there's this drive to feel full and I could see that feeling grounded. Now, is the, is the root chakra, um, where yeah. is that in the body? And so the root chakra is, is, um, it's interesting. Um, it's the base of the spine, but it's also your feet. It, it also uh, envelops our whole being. It's our structure. Mm-hmm. It's our joints and our bones and our tissues, right? All, um, you know, our, our hard tissue as well. And, um, It's also our DNA. Anything that roots us to our being is what the root is. There's so much metaphorical brilliance in these chakras. It's crazy. I love it. So what's really kind of interesting too is that uh, the chakras all correlate with certain specific colors. The root is red. Mm. And so interestingly enough, what feeds these adrenal glands, things that are red, things that are rich in vitamin C, things uh-huh. that um, also are like proteins that break down into amino acid, right? Mm. So that would be, you know, protein rich foods, uh, legumes, it would be our, our, our animal proteins, things like that. Fibers also, because they are very rich in structure, right? Mm. Um, and so it's really cool. Like each one of these chakras has their physiological uh, comp- com- components and also has our anatomical components. It has lifestyle issues like feeling support, feeling a sense of groundedness. Right. right. So it's just truly amazing. I love that. And I could see how when you sort of understand all seven of the chakras that you would have such a deeper sense of connection to yourself. By And, and I, I see what you're saying by being, uh, you were saying to me earlier, and maybe you can speak to this a little bit about like having it be your GPS guide to yourself. Exactly, exactly. Because here's the thing is, you know, so many of my clients, Rita, they're not connected with themselves, nor are they connected with their food. Mm-hmm. People are running around, eating on the run, eating with their cell phone, eating with the TV on, eating right. while they're doing something other than eating, mm-hmm. eating at the TV, right? Yes. What do we do at, at the movie theater? We're, we've got a huge bucket of popcorn <laughs> stepping on the crap. And what I say to people, you know, people always say, oh, is popcorn good for me? And I think... You know, it's fine, but here's the thing. You totally switch off your brain when you're so eating true. that. Yeah. And, you know, you can't be still hungry after you, you know, you eat a certain amount, yet you keep eating. It's that the, the texture, the flavor, the salt and the crunch and the butter, you know, it's these, these foods, these processed foods, and this is another topic already I won't get into, but these are specifically designed to make you continue to eat yes. highly palatable foods that right. switch the response in your brain from leptin to stop eating. Yeah. 
Oh. I just, uh, I was reviewing, actually, because I uh, am, uh, I think, in a future episode, reviewing a book that is uh, gets into that as well, which is super fascinating how the food industry has sort of mm, produced, uh, created, invented these foods that sort of tripwire or overcome our natural satiety and um, engage the dopamine center in our brain to overdrive or override those natural um, stopping, oh, I'm full now and keep eating even though we're full. Exactly. And you know what you're saying uh, that I was talking about the inner GPS is that we truly do need a sort of system to tune in because half of the time they're reading, we're not hungry. It's, we're really needing something else. Mm. And so by knowing these chakras, one can assess what it really is that may be missing. Right. So um, how can you tell if a specific chakra is off like so we're talking about the gps guide so if i'm going along how do i know one is is off yeah great question um okay well let me give you a super simple one because so many people at least so many of my clients are are dealing with poor digestion i mean Mm, yeah most, most common issues it's related to basically any system right if we're not properly processing, you know, breaking down our foods and absorbing the nutrients from those foods, there's no way you can be healthy. There's just no way, right? And then also want to look at, all right, what about our gut bacteria and our microbiome and how that's affecting our mood and our energy and our memory and all of that. So um, the system that I see that's really pretty simple to diagnose, just kind of self-diagnose and kind of figure out if you're out of balance is your third chakra, your, um, your, I call it the fire. It's, it's your blood sugar and your metabolism. Yeah. It's, you know, there's so many limiting thought patterns around that. Um, you know, when people eat with stress, Um, I, you know, one of the big ones, I just got an email from someone uh, just about 20 minutes before I talked to you that they were just, they couldn't stop eating. And they said, you know, when I'm stressed, I can't stop eating. I don't know what to do about it. It's just the stress, right? Um, So this system is really interesting, Rita, because it's representative of your energy and it's also your power. Mm. So if your digestion's off, like, you don't feel motivated. You just don't feel like you have the power to finish some projects or even the capacity to, um, to just be who you want to be. Mm -hmm. It's the center in the middle of your body. That is the transformation, right? The fire in your belly. It's, it's your stomach, your gallbladder, your liver, pancreas, your small intestines, those things that are processing. Yeah. Right. And then, it's basically what gives you energy and what takes it away. And, you know, we're talking not only with food, but emotionally. Mm-hmm. That is so cool. So, so you, if you were feeling unproductive or feeling down, then you would, you would say, oh, maybe something's going on with my digestion. What am I? It could be. Um, and, you know, it's also maybe, all right, well, I've been, eating at restaurants. I've been eating processed foods. I've just feeling like my, my digestion's just kind of off right now. That's interesting how I just don't feel motivated. I just don't feel like, um, you know, I want to finish that project that I was doing. I just don't have that kind of fire in me or, or it's the, the ability to, burn you know you know you know that feeling when you're just sort of burning the candle at both ends yes I do right it's the same thing that your body is doing when it's trying to break down foods if it doesn't have that energy to break down the foods it is just not going to give you the mental energy I can totally see that physical and the psychological energy to get things done right and and then what 
So if you were going to work with somebody, you know, for like, let's say health or weight management, um, you know, what are the benefits of the chakra balancing? You know, when you work with somebody, are you balancing all the chakras? Are you working at it one at a time or, you know, like, well, I'm asking you too many questions. So, so maybe you can just walk us through like, what are the benefits of chakra balancing? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Rita, um, you know, the chakras are a toolkit. That's mm-hmm. what they are. They're a toolkit. Sometimes they don't even come up, but I know what I'm looking for. Right. I know where these imbalances are and I know where I need to speak into Um, I know the patterns that I'm recognizing, you know, that I see this physical response to someone is a, um, you know, is, is being determined by how they're thinking and vice versa, or maybe it's a hormone imbalance. Ah, now I see uh, why there may be some sort of psychological um, pattern Mm -hmm. that I'm seeing with that person that has that symptom. And I see the correlation. Right. So, you know, there are certain clients that are really interested in, in the chakras and I will express, you know, I'll, I'll talk about them, but not everybody, you know, is, is, um, is, is open as Mm -hmm. others. And, you know, this is not, you know, this is not, um, woo anymore it's it's actually pretty mainstream and sometimes people just you know i won't even talk chakras i'll just talk about their systems in fact if i'm talking to let's say a physician uh about imbalances i won't even talk about chakras they'll just talk about the systems right 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 so when when you're um balancing the systems for weight do you start at a particular chakra or do you just listen to that person and you're looking so not you're as a practitioner you're not necessarily talking chakras with them but you're listening to them and then making assessments and obviously it's kind of alchemy right you've got like their maybe their fire system is off but also their root system needs a little tweak but it's like d- different people are going to ne- have different needs in different areas pretty much oh they I will say Rita that the root the sacral and the fire are always going to be the ones where I start mm-hmm. right if we just bypass the root and we don't talk about um you know setting the foundation for any kind of program that I have or a service that I have It's not going to work. If we don't address patterns and address um, the why of of why people do what they do, right, Mm -hmm. Um, and getting grounded and rooted, setting, you know, setting people up for success is not going to happen unless we deal with the ground from the ground up. You can't, like, just go right into, let's say, uh, their level of compassion, which is definitely part of it. And, you know, one of the things that's really interesting is that these, these chakras kind of unify and work in little groups as well. Mm. We'll see, like, we'll see the root and um, the, the flow kind of coincide and do this happy dance with the, with the heart chakra, right? Because when you feel grounded is when you can feel like you can even give and receive love, which is part of the heart chakra. Right. Example. And then you can also see like chakras being imbalanced up the line and they affect the chakra either above it or below it. Mm. Right. Do people so, get blocked? So like that one, like if they're blocked in one chakra, then they're, the chakras above it will be impacted as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, another one that I see a lot, especially in, um, you know, the pre kind of peri and postmenopausal. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Menopause. The big one is the truth, the truth, the throat chakra. Mm. Chakra is because you know so many people don't you know they've been living for their kids and for their their mates and not you know yeah maybe you have a great job but you're doing so much you just rather not disturb the peace than just kind of like putting up with a lot mm-hmm. um, 
And that right there, that holding in your your truth, right, right, can really inhibit the flow around that region and really um, promote uh, imbalance in the thyroid. Oh, interesting. Right. So, um, you know, and then this is an interesting one too. Is it like we talk about eating food? Food. What does food do? It passes. It passes through this region of the throat. It has to go there to to be consumed. So that's a big one involved in eating the throat chakra. Right? Mm. So, so we're talking about authenticity as well with this throat chakra, um, and you know to be your authentic self. You know, um, if your thyroid's off. There is going to usually be a little bit of a, like, you know, these organs dance together, the thyroid and the adrenals. Mm-hmm. When one's off, you, you see symptoms on, in the other as well. Can I ask you if, if, like, for instance, you're talking about, like, adrenals and thyroid being off if the, uh, the throat chakra is off. And you were talking earlier about, like, foods correlating with different chakras. Um so would part of your uh, your healing process, be, it, like, do you find that when somebody is, like, imbalanced in their throat chakra that they then are usually not eating the foods that are right for that particular chakra? Or is your part of your healing process to make sure they're getting those foods in their body? Absolutely. But a little bit of both. But um, what I would do, just as a... As a as a, kind of an example of what you're you're asking and kind of what I'm talking about is that for the throat chakra, the things that nourish it are things that are um, rich in minerals and iodine. Oh. Uh, and interestingly enough, the thyroid needs iodine, right? So uh, what I would say is, you know, eat more sea vegetables that are rich in, in minerals um, that nourish the thyroid. Um, other than that, I'd say uh, foods that are moist, that helps lubricate and open the channels of expression, right? We're talking now is, is psychology instead of the physiology, but things that are moist like teas and soups and juices and, and, and oh, high- interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even the color as well, we're, we're talking about uh, this throat chakra correlates with this, the color aquamarine. Oh, wow. So we think of the sea, the ocean, mm-hmm. plankton, the things that are swimming naturally mm-hmm. in the ocean. Mm. Well, and, and so now, I, which brings me to another question, like we're moving up the chakras and I'm not quite sure what brain health is, but I'm assuming it's one of the top chakras. <laughs> oh my God. It is like, it's completely my favorite chakra. It really is. And I think, you know what, um, even before I go into it, um, I want to, I just want to ask you just a quick question. And that is what color is your favorite color? Well, I have to say red and blue are my favorite colors. And, and uh, yeah, those are my favorite colors. Okay, that's so interesting because nine times out of 10, it goes to, it, it, the color that we really, really like is the color that has the most meaning to us with hmm. the system. Now, red for you is root. So feeling grounded for you is probably a really important thing. Yes. And then the blues and the purples is like insight. You're very inquisitive. I mean, you you have to be as a hypnotherapist. Right. So, and those are actually my, uh, mine as well. Mostly really? purple, but I would say my second would be red, but definitely uh-huh. the, blues and the purples and the blues and the purples are associated with insight. Interesting. What is purple? Is purple the brain, the the head? Yeah. So it's that blue, purple. Sometimes people say lavender, but I say it's it's more like purple and blue. Uh, third eye chakra. Mm-hmm. And your, um, you know, we think about creativity here, and we think about um, sleep as well, mm. and insight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of interesting when we look at this chakra is as it relates to food. Um, you know, not understanding or having the insight as to truly what your body needs. Mm -hmm. It it may be just like, oh, it's there and you just eat it. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or not knowing that, you know, you eat it, but you just 
keep forgetting that every time you eat this way, it just gives you the worst indigestion or bloating or, you know, allergies or, you know, sinus stuff. Right. Um, and it's, it's interesting is each one of these chakras um, has these limiting patterns, you know, uh, one, one that I uh, come across a lot in my practice is those that if they're trying to lose weight or be healthy, uh, you know, they could be both or either, um, but someone might be thinking and in, in, in believing that I can't imagine myself in a, in a thinner body. Right. Or um, it may be someone that is having trouble viewing a larger perspective on what a healthier lifestyle would be. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely can agree with you more that uh, there's, creativity is such a huge part of transformation of any sort Mm -hmm. and uh, I think a lot of times when we think about losing weight we think about taking away rather than creating something new and what you're what I'm or you know like a new lifestyle a new idea of yourself um, shifting identity you know and uh, I can see how that purple the head chakra what do you call it the the third eye chakra I yep yeah, I love that. that yeah, you know, interestingly enough, it you know, and there's so much research. I mean, you could look at PubMed right now and find thousands upon thousands about uh, of studies done on um, the the beautiful value of wild blueberries mm. and purple foods in general. Right, purple kale, purple cauliflower, acai. Right. Mm -hmm. Figs, purple grapes, all of those, anything that's green that has purple pigments on it, like purple kale, you know, on the very tips of leaves. And so it said that um, these purple pigments, these phytochemicals are they're associated with um, better hippocampal function. So memory, Mm. memory storage, um, also mood. There's tons and tons of studies on um, neurotransmitters and um, the purple phytochemical um, ithocyanidins. I, I, ah, no, wrong. Um, and anthocyanidins. I was thinking. Wow, of- I'm impressed that you said that all in one go. Yeah, yeah, I've lost the <laughs> so It's so funny though, too, because um, for one person, certain foods would actually nourish this chakra and for another the same foods will kind of imbalance it and so we look at the insight this chakra right here so um what what it is nourished with not only the purple foods but also a balance of um you know things that are uh, that actually affect our our brain, uh, like even stimulants, but naturally, you know, like I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about is like green tea and, um, right. Green, you know, chocolate, anything, ca- caffeine associated substances. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that genetically we are all unique. Uh, for instance, as myself, I'll bring up, um, I love coffee. I love the mouth. I mean, I'm not talking like, any coffee. just, I mean, talking like, you know, a nice cortado, or a cappuccino with the finest espresso, you know, yeah. uh, I just love it, but I can't drink it. I can't drink it. I'm just, you know, I probably have, you know, I'll, I'll have one, you know, every, every so often, but because I am deficient in um, a specific gene that helps to metabolize it, I actually am a very uh, slow metabolizer. So I don't excrete it fast enough. Mm-hmm. Right. So it stays in my bloodstream. Oh, there's many people like us, right? Um, so with me, I'm already a type A personality. <laughs> stick to green tea. And even that has a little bit of caffeine. Um, but what we don't want to do is, um, you know, consume the things that are not right for our individual physiology. Wow. How would you find that out? Like, how would you find out your genetic code? For um, your- well, you can find it out with genetic testing. I do a little bit of genetic testing, but um, you know what? If if you know, I mean, you, you just kind of know. Right. Like, if you don't do well with caffeine, you probably uh, get headaches or heart palpitations or you're right. just way too talkative or you can't sleep or... You just, uh, you get moody, irritable, or really hungry. Uh-huh. 
right? then, then you so, then you're you're cued into it. And if somebody yeah. coming to you with an issue like that, you might look at their caffeine consumption. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Okay. Oh, so fascinating. Um, yeah, no, I. It's so funny for me. I, you know, I know I had told you we were talking before we turned on record and um, I, you know, was catering, you know, in New York City. And I remember days where I would like drink espresso and then go to sleep at night. So I think I'm the opposite of you, Kat. I'm <laughs> I am so envious because to me, it's it's not, uh, I mean, the buzz is nice a little bit just for like the first five, 10 minutes. Yeah. But for me, it's the flavor. I'm a, I'm a super taster. Yes. And I mean, I'm telling you that just the texture of it, the mouth, right. feel, the aroma, yeah, I can tell you have a very uh, powerful palate, you know, Definitely. because when especially like food is a way that you, uh, if you're a, a former chef, like uh, can express yourself. But I can tell you really love the textures and the the what food does. Yeah. It's so cool that you have this insight and that food is so much more than just eating food, but that it has all these different. Uh, layers to it within the body. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I was, you know, thinking about that um, a while back, and I, and I thought, you know, it's like the difference is, is uh, you know, when we talk to our clients about eating, it's it's about eating, um, at, you know, um, as pleasure, but not eating for pleasure. Mm. You know what I mean? It's yes. Like, I love that distinction. Really enjoy it and celebrate it. But if that's all we do, um, then it's, it's not balance. It's right. Not balance. I love that. That is a powerful, powerful distinction eating as pleasure, but not for pleasure. Is that, did I get yeah. it right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I know that your, um, what is anything else you think that would be like within what we're talking about Kat with my audience what do you think that they might like to know like a you know like as a final sort of insight you know like bringing together all that we've talked about today yeah I love that and I think um this is why um I I kind of explore this area so much in my um in my practice and in my own in my own life is um is that it's so interesting Rita to ask why Mm -hmm. like and also what I love about this too is that I can um is is we ask why we look at our food story Mm -hmm. it's it's interesting I do this exercise with groups a lot and Uh it's called um it's called the laddering technique. Ooh, and so I love it. it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you know it. It's I don't. Used. Oh, I might. I if it's yeah. a chain, it might be like a chain technique. But, but please tell yeah. us what yeah. it is. So you'll pick a food. Like usually, it's like chocolate or ice cream or pizza or whatever. Like people just really, really love. Okay, right. you say it in a group and you say the the word twenty times slowly, mm-hmm. and everybody is to write down the first word that comes to their mind when they hear that mm. and and so they write that down and then after it's usually about you know a good couple minutes um we'll go through and we'll in order make a story up about all of those foods and find like like sometimes there's like one word that keeps coming up over and over again or sometimes it's a collection of words that you just haven't even thought of and it's usually the reason why you you desire or even over desire a certain food. And so just knowing that that pattern or that story can really just give you a lot more power, right? Is to understand your why as to why you are so sensitive and why you are so drawn to that, right? It's almost like you can have a little bit of more self-compassion. This is a really good one for my overeaters. Right. Or people who are really, you know, just, you know, have strong food addictions. Just understand, you know, that it's um, there's a reason for this pattern and, it, and it's it's OK to have some self-compassion and be more curious. That's the yeah. bottom line is when we get away from being judgmental. Mm-hmm. It, this is when we can start to have the results. Right. This is when we yeah. can really just settle into authentic living. Yeah. And, explore ourselves versus you know there's no growth in judgment right 
I love that. And yeah, we talk about the inner critic a lot and how when we don't have compassion for ourselves and when we judge ourselves, yeah, it, all those limiting beliefs get in our way and the road to, uh, you know, break through that resistance is by owning it and loving yourself and complete compassion. I love, I love that exercise. So I want to get this straight. So you would like say pizza 20 times and then you would write down like what, what came to your mind and then you would then say a different food and say that 20 times like, no you see the same food oh you just think so yeah. this one food and then you're saying it 20 times and then you're writing different words that come to your mind when you're saying those okay that is really cool and then and then you create a story yeah because so often we don't get uh and i i think the word is curious that we don't just own those like oh I love pizza it's like oh I shouldn't I shouldn't like pizza right. it's bad for me it's blah, blah blah we have all these opinions and ideas but we go oh well what's the, I love that creating a story and going in and having a different perspective that's so creative you work very creatively with your clients that's so cool yeah well this is not this is not something that I created I actually um, I found out about it through one of my teachers. Oh, I love it. That's a great, well, whatever. I love that you work with your clients in that way. That's fantastic. Um, so if people are curious about working with you, Kat, I know I am putting in the show notes your information, how people can get in touch with you. But you also have if, uh, a, a gift that you're giving everybody, which is very generous of you. Can you tell us a little bit about this gift that you're yeah, yeah. I love this because it's uh, it's so user-friendly. It's actually a chakra grocery guide. So on one side, it explains the chakras very simply. On the other side, it shows some imbalances and what you'd want to eat more of to cover and to balance that specific chakra. That's so great. I love that. And I love the fact because we didn't get to cover all the chakras today that you're giving that gift so that if somebody's curious, like, what are the seven chakras that they'll yeah. have? access and be able to look at what the imbalances are so yeah. cool. and it's super colorful what you can do is laminate it um, I actually also have it as a pad and um, I'm trying to market it mm -hmm. um, but I'm not I haven't I don't have it ready yet okay well we'll look around the holiday season for that <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it um, well thank you so much for your time and like I said if you want to get in touch with Kat um, it, you can find her information. We'll have your website. Is there any other, uh, your website and then also your email address? Is there any other uh, place that people should look for you? Um, yeah, you know, a fun thing to do is go to Healthy Hacks That Last. That's my Facebook group. And I do tons and tons of resources and tips on a daily basis there. Oh, I love that. Okay, great. Yeah. So that, that's an easy in. To getting more from Kat Dillon. Yeah. Um, I love that. And you do um, tell everybody uh, quickly about your summit. Or your, you do these groups with um, experts yeah. as well, which is so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I had Rita on twice, which was. So <laughs> I wish I was so honored. Yeah. And um, we'll probably be doing one in the next couple of months. Um, they're always related to. Um, the, uh, the the physical and the physiological, the, the physical and the mental, basically. Yeah. Uh, I like to, I, you can't do one without the other. So whatever it is, um, it will definitely be mind, body, spirit, mind, body, soul. And uh, it's always a good time. So look out for this because I will always be advertising her summits because she gets some amazing guests on. So oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks again so much, Kat. Um, we really appreciate your time. And wow, I found I learned so much today. It's so great. Great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you again, Kat Dillon. That was amazing. And remember, this episode was brought to you all by my free Shift Out of Sugar Cravings Hypnosis Session. Just find that link in the show notes and grab your free copy or head on over to www.shiftweightmastery.com and find the offer there. All right, everybody. I hope 
You have an amazing week coming up. Thanks again for sharing my 20th episode of Thin Thinking with me. Uh, This is so great. I feel like it is a celebration. Um, And remember that the key and probably the only key to unlocking the door of the weight struggle is inside you. So keep listening and find it. Do you want to dive deeper into the mindset of long-term weight release? Head on over to www.shiftweightmastery.com. That's www.shiftweightmastery.com, where you'll find numerous tools and resources to help you unlock your mind for permanent weight release, tips, strategies, and more. And be sure to check the show notes to learn more about my book, From Fat to Thin Thinking, Unlock Your Mind for Permanent Weight Loss.